Knock High. Hello and welcome to Knock Knock High with the Glock and Fleckens. I took you by surprise. You well, weren't I was ready like mid sentence. <laughs> going to tell you something, but I guess we're starting. Hi, everyone. Hi, I am Will Flannery, also known as Glock, uh, Dr. Glock and Flecken. <laughs> <laughs> Glock and Dr. Glock and Flecken. <laughs> And who are you? I Do you know? Because it seems like you might not. <laughs> I do know. I'm your wife. I'm Kristen Flannery, also known as Lady Glockham Fleck. And nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. You seem a little... Uh, I'm a little loopy. A little loopy. Yeah, I, a little... I'm just, I don't know. It's been a good day. Well, good. We, we've we've had a, a, some good conversations today. Mm-hmm. I, got, I was on a, a little trip, speaking trip, and now I'm back. And um, uh, it's always good to come back to the family. And well, the good. Kids, the kids are still at an age where they, they get excited when I walk in. Yeah, you still get the just, daddy. Yeah. Oh, it's so fun. I yeah. never get tired of that. And you get it from the dog. I get it from the dog, and yeah. to a lesser extent, you. Yeah, I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you don't uh, <laughs> yell out daddy and run up to me. <laughs> no, that Thank would you be for not doing that. That'd be weird. Uh, so we have Doctor Tommy Martin today. That's right. Uh, he is. You all probably know who he is. He is um, uh, all over TikTok mm-hmm. uh, and uh, multiple social media platforms. Instagram. He's also on YouTube. Uh, he is an internal medicine and pediatrics specialist. We call that medpeds. Yeah. Internal medicine, so adult medicine and kid medicine. But specifically in the hospital. Yeah, he's a, right? you know, like a hos- like a peds hospitalist and a, like an adult hospitalist. It's like he internal medicine as opposed to external medicine, yeah. which would be outpatients. Which sounds right. I, I, yeah. I go, I go on and on. I think in an interview, like how hard his job sounds. Like I that's it's like two totally different things in medicine. Yeah. And he's just uh, somehow able to because he's brilliant uh, to to just do both. Uh, but he is based in Massachusetts uh, and uh, affiliated with um, Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital, Boston Children's Hospital. Uh, but outside of the awesome things he does in medicine, he has a huge social media following. Uh, so he is uh, a prominent physician figure on social media. Uh, and uh, One of the early ones, in he's, fact. Yeah, he's been doing it since 2013. Uh, at Dr. Tommy Martin, uh, where um, he his social media content is it's really very positive. Mm-hmm. He's a very positive person. Yeah. He's not a big downer like I am at right. times. Right, right. <laughs> um, and so it, his he's really driven by the, his desire to encourage, motivate, inspire as many people as possible, uh, talking about the things that he's passionate about, like fitness. He's a triathlete. Mm-hmm. Uh, also just in medicine. Medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics, all the things, his life. family life. Uh, he's really open about all his experiences as he's gone through his medical career. And he's very early in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I got to say, if you have, if you have like some kind of, uh, you know, inferiority complex or you struggle <laughs> with feeling like you're not achieving, you might want to skip this episode. No, welcome to the team because we're there with you. <laughs> That's it's. Uh, he sure does do a lot of things. He does a lot of things. I don't, I don't know how he has... I mean, the time is one thing, and we talk about that in the episode, but the energy, like yeah. how to maintain that level of energy to do that many I things. I think maybe doing things like it gives you did. more yeah, energy. It's probably like a positive feedback loop. Exactly. And if if you're slovenly like me. Yeah. Then, um, negative feedback loop. Kinda, yeah, exactly. Right? Something about uh, psychology. I don't know. You're the psychologist. I mean, aren't those in biology too? I feel like that's a biology thing. Sure. It's um, physiology. Yeah. Right, I think med probably. students know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else can we? Do? Oh, we're in. We're at the end of summer. We did it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The we, summer is rough. So when, when you, you have to, kids these ages, when you get yeah, when you're, you're and you're trying to work, you're both working full yeah. time, and um, and kids, young kids that need things to do. Yeah. It's like a big Jenga puzzle trying to put together summer camps. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And. It's, you, you, you know those puzzles, of, of course. Do you know those puzzles where you like slide it with your fingers where there's like, it's a square, right? Yeah. And there's like a grid, like a four by four grid of tiles on the square or something. But one of the yeah, yeah. tiles is missing and you have to arrange all the tiles yeah. in a way that it makes a picture, but by like one little move at a time. That is what arranging a summer is like for a parent. Yeah. All the people in all the places at all the times and all the drop offs and the pickups and the meetings and the appointments and the jobs and the dog and the. Ugh. Yeah. 
That's a lot. I'm tired. God bless teachers. <laughs> Thank you for taking our children we when got, we are at the end of our ropes. But they're doing cool. Like, I don't know. Like I remember when I was, like I I spent. I just like I went to. I played tennis. I did some things, but some of the things that kids are doing nowadays, like parkour. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Parkour camp. Well, and we live in a place where they are fortunate enough to have a lot of opportunities. That's true. You a lot know, of things. Close like horse by. camps. Yeah, they, we, horse we've done horses, we've done soccer, swimming, uh, there's been basketball camps, there's, yeah, parkour camps, there's art camps, there's music camps. I mean, they just have everything. You know what I did? When I was a kid, I uh, I worked. You, I worked. You lived, I had my first job at 10 years old. You lived in the armpit of society. I, there was nothing to do. <laughs> there was... Nothing. You could go outside and just, I don't, I don't know, sit Draw there. Draw in the dirt. Yeah, I did a lot of like staring at the clouds, like coming mm. up with uh, the point is, animals. Kids have a lot to do. They have a lot of things they can do these days, which is cool. Yeah, that's great. Uh, but it's also but no, but very I'm glad to send them back to school at the end of a yes, summer. It like is, it is a relief. I'm not gonna lie. Love the children. Love them very much. But go to school. Would do anything at all for them. But I really do like you know having eight hours to myself. Well, let's talk to Dr. We could go on and on. I feel like we have. Um, so <laughs> let's get to our conversation with Dr. Tommy Martin. Here let's he is. Let's do it. All right. We are here with Dr. Tommy Martin. We've been trying to get, do this for a while, Tommy. I'm glad we finally got it done. Welcome. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for uh, bearing with me through all of the hectic schedules. Uh, you you got a um, you got a busy life these days, and so uh, uh, first off, the first thing I want to ask is how many hours have you been awake right now? <laughs> because I you saw, watched too much of my. <laughs> I did. I I went on a little uh, Dr. Tommy Martin binge on TikTok, <laughs> and um, uh, le- have you been up since like what three forty five or something in the morning? Yeah, I usually wake up between three forty-five and four. Oof. You know I... that's not normal, right? Okay. Like that's, like that's that's. Everybody uh... has their different normal. <laughs> like, right? Your normal is a lot different than my normal. Oh, my my normal is a lot different than yeah. yours. Yeah. That's so. But yeah, honestly, you know, I will say after I watched that TikTok where you, so basically it was a for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a video where you basically just go through like your day, like what what it takes to do you know, the medicine and the training and the lifting and all these things, family time, it really f- fascinating. I always find those fascinating for, for different doctors to, uh, or in, you know, medical influencers or however, what do you ever want to call us, um, to see what your day is like. And so I watched that and then I remember, because it was last night. Yeah. And what did I what did I say? Well, I've been on him a while. I've been using a, a personal trainer, and I've been loving it. There and I have go. some, like, I have hypermobility issues, so I kind of need supervision in my workouts. But I just thought he would love it, too, because I know him well. And so I've been on him for months trying to get him to do this. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then last night he checks out your TikToks, and he's like, all right. Send me the link. I'm going to get a personal <laughs> trainer. <laughs> hey, I mean, just a little plug. If you need a coach, I'd be more than happy to. You know, and well, uh, yeah. I could let you sleep in until 4.30. I, oh, <laughs> that's, what a that's, reward. That's so kind. You know, the last time I woke up in the, like the the 4 a.m. hour. Um, it's was, always just to catch a flight, I think. Well, that I don't count that. But like yeah. like on a consistent basis was my oh. third year rotation uh, for surgery, surgery, my yeah. surgery rotation. Uh, and so, um, uh, you're doing it for very productive. I, are there days though, Tommy, when you, when you wake up and you're like, Oh no, nah, I forget this. <laughs> I, there's no way I need three extra hours of sleep today. Yeah. I will say after a week on service where I've worked like 80 to 90 hours and commuted a ton and my sleep definitely is not where it should be. Usually the next day or two I'll sleep in some. <laughs> Okay. But then I'll try to sleep in as long as I possibly can. And then I'm waking up like at 530. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, I want to sleep till seven. That's sleeping in for you now. You've you've trained your body to wake up. But you're, so you're training. You're, I mean, it, it takes a lot of dedication because you're training for your, uh, you're doing Ironmans and triathlons. And and so yeah, it, I've got some races coming up this fall. So I've got a half Ironman coming up and then a full distance Ironman. But I'm trying to combine that with powerlifting, which is a little tough. Yeah. 
Is that a is that like a new sport you're inventing, or is that like a powerlifting? No, no, no. Combining the two. Oh, okay. I know powerlifting's a <laughs> it's thing. Like, I know you haven't been to the gym in a like while, combi- but <laughs> golly. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, not necessarily. I, I'd say it's probably over the last six years become more of like a fad just to okay. see if you could combine endurance sports with bodybuilding and powerlifting. And so I've been doing it for a few years now, but the feat that I want to accomplish, only one other person has done it. Um, but I, I'm going to try to beat the Ironman time by a couple hours. Oh, man. That's how well, many times have you had rhabdomyolysis? <laughs> you know, I've never got my uh, blood tested after a, <laughs> a race, but probably quite a few. <laughs> well, I want to um, I want to talk a little bit about about your medical career. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. Kristen, mm-hmm. in fact, she's always what what bothers, what irritates Kristen is when we when what I say like, me? Let's, what, how much what, time what, do you have? Whenever <laughs> I yeah right, whenever we I refer to like oh that's a medicine doctor yeah that's a, like an internal like a it's like a medicine you're doing he, yeah he basically medicine. what that sounds like to me as a non medical professional is mm-hmm. um, he's a doctor doctor because <laughs> it's, it's like, like what is that it's all medicine it's what all do you medicine. mean he's a medicine. Right. But you have a a, 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 a more unique uh, position where you're doing internal medicine and pediatrics. So you did med peds for your yeah, training, correct. Yeah, right? It's a four year, yeah, four year program. Yeah. And so tell tell me what your how does that translate into your career? Like, what is it exactly that you do? Yeah, for me specifically, I do exactly fifty. Well, technically sixty fifty. So I do a little bit. I work a little more than what I should, but I do sixty percent of my time with adult medicine. And then I do 50% of my time with pediatric medicine and all of my time is working in a hospital. So as a hospitalist, so I'll split my time. I'll do a week of internal medicine, then I'll get a week off and then I'll do a week of pediatrics and then I'll get a week off. And it just does that throughout the year. That, that is, is that a, like a typical, that's a thing that people often do or this is something beats. you need? Is this like the Iron Man weightlifting <laughs> thing where you're ma- making something new? My whole, my whole personality is just like, do something weird and yeah. do something different. No, Smash uh, two things together. Actually, right. that's a good question. Like, how, how long has MedPeds been a thing? Because, you know, it's it's not probably, I mean, it's probably not as common as each of those specialties individually. Right, yeah. It, so it's been around actually for a few decades or maybe even 40, 50 years, maybe even longer than that. Hmm. Uh, but it's just not very well known. And most people that do it, I will say, after training, end up specializing in one or the other. Uh, just because it's really hard to practice both. And even with yeah. the way things are coming out now, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics and um, the pediatric division has made it to where you have to do a fellowship to even be a hospitalist. So you have to do two or three more years of training after residency to do what you just trained for three years for. Um, I, you can tell I'm really? not the biggest fan of it, but yeah. Huh. Did you do that? Like what? I did <laughs> not do that, no. Oh, man. Okay. Why do they want you yeah. to do that? It's <laughs> a good question. <laughs> I mean, they have quite a few reasons. I would I don't know how many people is going to listen to this. I don't know if I should tell my full thoughts on this. <laughs> I think you tell tell whatever you think, whatever you feel comfortable talking about. I think that's, yeah, no, that's I was, fair. I was just maybe joking, but um, <laughs> I think that there is a... We're not trying uh, to get you fired here, Yeah, Tommy. no, no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no gotcha uh, so, moments over here. It's, it's hard to know for sure like why they did it because like in my mind doing pediatric residency, I had tons of hospital medicine, medicine time. Right. But a lot of it I think um, is academic in nature. And so learning how to do QI projects, learning how to do research and teach residents and medical students how to do research, a lot of that, that you do not necessarily get in residency unless you're actively doing those things. So I think it's to better prepare you as an academic hospitalist potentially. Mm. And so... My next question for you is why med peds? Because um, that it just seems really hard <laughs> to do. Uh, it's like you basically have two jobs, right? Uh, so like you yeah, have I to mean, keep up on two different fields. Well, and just and yeah, exactly. You got you got to you got to learn. You know, just so much more information, but also like the 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 brain switch from going from like it's you a know, week off in between adult resets. to kids to because we're told over and over again, right? That kids aren't little adults, uh, and so right. it's like a totally seems like a totally separate mindset. You're going from week to week to week, uh, and so I, I would love to hear kind of your origin story, like how you ended up in this field. 
Yeah, I mean, I'll, it's pretty long, but I'll give like the summarized version. So initially I was like dead set on surgery when I started medical school. Mm. I was 1000% going to be a surgeon. And on my surgery rotation, I loved it. I was at a community-based hospital that let me do so much for being a third year medical student. Mm. Kind of scary how much they let me do. <laughs> but it was <laughs> looking back on it like, oh my gosh, right. well, I, I barely knew how to like, I don't know, find the elevator in the hospital, let alone do <laughs> what they let me do. Do a solo um, appendectomy, you know, just, you know, <laughs> everything by yourself. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. I did an amputate a leg, which I mean, you can't really yeah. mess that up, but like. Right. Yeah. Um, so on my surgery rotation, it was four in the morning, you know, 4.30, and we were going to go see this patient. And this patient, uh, we didn't know exactly what was going on, but we had to do a biopsy to see if they had cancer. And so the chief surgery surgeon went in there and was like, hey, we're going to have to do a biopsy. You may have cancer. So we're going to get to the OR. We'll see you here in a couple hours. And obviously this patient was like, what? Like I might have cancer. Yeah. And, and the chief surgeon was like, you know, about to go out of the room because he said, we have to get to the OR. The OR schedule is busy. And I saw that she was wearing a cross on her neck. And so I asked the chief surgeon, I was like, hey, is it okay if I just stick around and like talk to her and pray with her if she wants? And he said, do whatever you want, but we have to get to the OR. Like, All right. <laughs> so, Right. This is like my second or third week of surgery or whatever. And so I <laughs> stay back, hang out with the patient. Um, by the end of it, I just asked her, I was like, I noticed that you were wearing a cross. Would you like me to pray with you? And she said, yes. So that all went on. And then went on with my surgery rotation. Loved it. Best yeah. like rotation ever. It was so much fun. And like it worked with my schedule. <laughs> right. Which is, I know you guys are like, that's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> But I was like, yes, we get to wake up at four in the morning and yes, we get to go to it's work perfect. in the hospital. Yeah, it was like 126 <laughs> hours my first week. It was ideal. Um, and then, We're very uh, different oh people. God, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. And then so my internal medicine rotation was my next rotation. And a couple of weeks in, I get a call from an oncologist and he asked me to go to his office. I had no idea why he wanted me to go to his office. Didn't even know this guy. And when I get to his office, he said, hey, could you go see this patient in this room? I'm like, this is really weird. What in the world's going on? So I went in that room. And when I did, it was that patient from, oh, you know, 12 yeah. weeks ago. And they said, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, it's the angel that God had sent me. Uh, and they gave me a really big hug. And then from that moment on, I was like, you know what? I love surgery. But yeah. I don't know if it would allow me to have the lifestyle that I want to have where I could spend as much time with the patients as I possibly want to. Yeah. Uh, so that is when I decided, you know, it's medicine. Uh, and then pediatrics was some fun patient, and fun and embarrassing patient encounters I had with some kids where yeah. I was like, you know what? I love everyone and I don't want to serve everyone. I want to be a doctor yeah. of everyone. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's such a good story. And that, that's, that's cool that you found it in that way. You know, found what you wanted to do. And, and, and then, so now you're going to like internal medicine, pediatrics, yeah. uh, and but now you still have like three hours in the morning you have to fill up with something so you might as well do iron man's right might That's, as well right oh right? you're one to talk C what about, about filling up your free time i know like i <laughs> yeah except i i'm uh, i would say i'm probably less productive in my free time dressing up as different specialties in medicine but um that's true <laughs> but so it's so you were you were you decided on that you said surgery wasn't you know quite the right thing to go and then and then internal medicine versus pediatric could you just like was it just you were totally split like i don't know which way to go fortunately i can do both things is that kind of how it how it works yeah it wasn't that i didn't know which one i wanted to do it was that i knew for sure i wanted to do both oh, okay uh, All right. yeah and so with that another thing is when you look at overseas mission work and what is the most sought after doctors mm -hmm. i think med peds is third or fourth on the list and i knew oh, that that's something okay. that i'm very passionate about and the reason being is because if you go over there and you're just a pediatrician, I mean, your utility is only for kids. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, of course they could use you for other things, but if you know medicine from all ages, then your utility is so much higher, you know? And so that was another big component of it. Yeah. And so going from, I've never heard of someone doing it like the way you're doing it, where it's like internal medicine a week, you take a week off, pediatrics for a week. Uh, it, it, do you ever do them back to back or is it, do you always get a break in between? I've done a 21 day stretch. So Oof. that would be my first 21 straight days. <laughs> yeah. 21 straight days. Yeah. I think that's illegal in ophthalmology. Like you're <laughs> well, not, yeah. you're not, I, I think I get my license taken away if I try to work 21 straight days. <laughs> um, wow. 
Yeah, it was it was a lot, but so we could set it up however we want. But if I work twenty one straight days, that gives me almost a whole month off. Oh, to do, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You know, like all these other things that I, I do, and yeah. Well, let's get to some of those because uh, let's when, do it. Yeah, when did you the, the social media thing? Uh, you so you have of uh, uh, over Ish. two million um, on TikTok. You got h- over a hundred thousand on Instagram. Uh, a bunch of YouTube subscribers. When did this start for you? So social media started back in 2013, which is a long time ago. Oh, most man. people yeah. yeah, most people think like on social media, oh, you just blew up overnight, but people don't understand like how many hours yeah. um or videos that some of us have put into it. So it started back in 2013. Uh, and that was on Instagram? That was on Instagram. Uh, and that was just really minor stuff. And then it really got started in 2014 when my wife told me I needed to start a YouTube channel. And that's kind of how it all started. That was, so, you got to listen to the wives. It's good advice, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, she, I mean, she's brilliant, but uh, <laughs> she didn't know what she was getting herself into, and neither did I. Yeah. Because she did it to give us more time together, because oh. I was meeting with... <laughs> yeah, Kristen's really like... Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kristen, how much time does social media take away from you guys? Oh, it's another full time job. I do, I do the, you know, I run the business side of things, and I do some other. She does the stuff full time. Social media and writing stuff, and I do oh. it full time now. Yeah, yeah. it's wow, my full time career. Incredible. And then he comes home, and it's it's a lot of his free time. Most of his free time, besides like, I wouldn't count kid time as free time. You know, like yeah. he goes to work, we have family time, and he has this. But so, we, we also try to we involve the kids a little bit in we it try as well. To, yeah, so, even if it's not like on camera, but just like. You know, they, they like showing it. it to them and getting their ideas and stuff. So, and we have, yeah, a, wait, I'm sure they're like, my dad has over a million followers. Like, that's the coolest thing oh, in the world. Oh, man. <laughs> Tommy, I, so that when I hit a million YouTube subscribers, that was to my kids, that was the, the pinnacle of human achievement. Yeah. That was an accomplishment they understood. Like, yeah. They, they yeah. got it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I could not, I could have, I could meet the president. I could do any yeah, uh, thing. Care. And it's like, woof. Who cares? You got a million YouTube subscribers. That's as, as, as good as you just retire <laughs> now, can, Dad. Yeah, retire. You're yeah. done. What's the point? So that's so great. So where were you in your <laughs> medical career, I guess, in 2013? I was just I just finished undergrad. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So I did undergrad a little quick. Um, I finished it in three years and then I wanted to go straight to medical school. Mm-hmm. And so finished, went straight to medical school. And in medical school, I was meeting with medical students and teaching them how to study, how to do well in your exams, how to create a schedule and things of that nature. Well, it got to where I was meeting with 15 to 20 students a day. And my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife, Phoebe, she said, Tommy, you've got to stop this. Like you meet with 15 to 20 students a day, like your whole day is just meetings. Like you just can't do this. You should create a YouTube channel yeah. and just put all the content there. And when people ask you the question that you've answered on your YouTube channel, Point them there. And so that's what I started to do. And that's kind of where social media really kind of started. Yeah. So you were meeting these, uh, just they wanted advice. You were just yeah. giving advice about med school and applying and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Um, and I mean, that's so you, you must, uh, you're probably one of the very early adopters of, of doing that type of medical kind of influencer type work. Um, and uh, uh, certainly on Instagram, I'm not sure on YouTube, but. And I mean, there's a lot of that now. So you're very much a, Pioneer. a trailblazer yeah. in that area. <laughs> yeah, I will say there were a couple. Um, one of their names was Jenny, I believe, and Aaron Hayes. There were a couple that I remember on YouTube, but there w- weren't very many of us at all. And I had no idea what I was doing. I <laughs> recorded all of my videos and edited them and uploaded them with an iPad mini, the first generation. Oh, my God. And that's what I used for <laughs> all of my content. Wow. It, until I reached 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you ever go back and see and look at the quality Please of those? Don't. Yeah. wish we would have even mentioned that. No one needs to go look at anything. My wife, like, she was like, your first video was terrible. Like, who was that? <laughs> oh, I, I, I totally relate. Like, I, I look back at the stuff I made because I... I yeah, you making... weren't even doing the same thing. No, I know it was. It no was no characters yet. No, that was because it was all. I I joined uh, TikTok. That's when I started making video content. Okay. Was right at the height of the pandemic. Yeah, you did the dancing eyebrows. That was yeah. Like I, <laughs> well, I was you know doing the thing like jumping on trends and stuff and and but I, I wasn't doing like like a lot of the comedy like skit writing type of thing. And so you look back at the old stuff and it's just like 
mean, I was learning how to how to do it, right? And I think that's that's a good lesson for people because I do. I'm sure you get this a lot. A lot of people ask, like, how do you even get started on social? It can feel so daunting, knowing you know what to do, how to get started, and, and it's almost like you just gotta. If you have an idea, you just gotta do it. Just do it, and then yeah. and you're only gonna learn and get better by doing more of it. And yeah, it's going to suck. I mean, it, we're, we're terrible at everything we do whenever we first do it. And then you get better at it the more you do it, right? Yeah, exactly. And people think that you have to have the nicest camera, the nicest mic and the nicest lighting and all this stuff. But like, that's not necessarily true, especially with these new short form videos and, you know, these yeah. vertical, like everybody wants it to be as realistic as possible. And so I say, whatever you have, just get started and go with it. Exactly. I mean, right now. Right now, you're talking to us on an on an on an iPad Mini right here. So right. no, <laughs> you've got your Walkman. That's, that's right. That's and... actually true. No. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, so from there, I worked so hard on YouTube and Instagram from 2014 to 2019 and saw very little growth. And I was posting three times a day, every day on all platforms. Whoa. So like, I was working hard. And then I saw a video by Gary B that said, if you're not on TikTok, you're wasting your time. And I was like, what in the world? He said, whether you want to spread a good message, make a difference, you need to be on TikTok. So I studied the app for two weeks, saw what videos did well, what videos didn't do well, took notes on all of it, made my first video and it hit like 500,000 views overnight. And I had 50,000 followers in 24 hours. Um, and I was one of the first doctors. There was like two others, Dr. Leslie and someone else on TikTok at the yeah. time. And then from there, it just went yeah. crazy. It's TikTok is really, it, it totally changed the game in terms of audience building, right? Yeah. Uh, it's got to be just the way the, well, the time it came on, because this, again, like whenever the whole country shut down, everyone was on social media. <laughs> That's all people were doing, right? Oh my right? gosh, yeah. So it wasn't just TikTok, it was engagement on all the platforms, but TikTok in particular um, uh, was just blowing up and, uh, it was, I had a similar experience. It's just remarkable how quickly you can build an audience, uh, right. just because I mean, of I the mean, you went from, How fast did you get, hit a million? Like it was fast, right? It was fast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know, within a year, you know, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's, it's crazy compared to, you know, on Twitter or I, sorry, now X, I don't X. know if you've been, you probably, I don't even know if you even bother with, with, no. With, Probably in the end, that's a good the decision, best, yeah. but I, that's where I started. And, um, uh, and it's, it's much slower growth there. Um, but, uh, so yeah, it's different with different platforms, but, um, yeah, I, I totally agree with the, with the quality, like, don't worry mm -hmm. about quality so much. Yeah. If the, if the, it's the content, if what you're mm -hmm. saying, what I tell people is if, if, if what, if you believe in what you're saying and what you're the expertise you're trying to build up. Um, and it comes off as authentic, it's go people will pay attention to it, right? People will watch you. It doesn't matter what kind of device you're recording on. Right. Yeah. I usually tell people to like write down five things in your life that you're most passionate about. Like when you think about them, it like sets your heart on fire and whatever those five things are, write three topics next to each of those and then make all 15 of those videos and then see which ones catch fire and then make content on that. Yeah. That's a good approach. Do you have any any anything to add on building a social media audience? Social media. Well, you know, it helps if you have uh, someone behind the scenes doing a lot of your work for you. I'll just <laughs> oh say that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Absolutely. That has to be amazing. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty much a one-man show, and it's a lot. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It is. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, I, I don't know. Like, that's what I was going to ask you is how – because you're doing this. You said you're you're just slogging away. You're posting three times a week, but you're also in med school at this time. Mm -hmm. And did you, as you're doing this through your medical education and training, did you get any pushback? Did you get any like, you know, because it, it, sometimes it's hard for people <laughs> to accept that this is a legitimate thing that, that you should be spending your time on. And, and I certainly have heard people in medicine who kind of got themselves into trouble. Have you ever had any issues like that? Yeah. So I'd say early on when my accounts were smaller, no one knew who I was or anything on social media. So it really didn't matter. Uh, but people like my colleagues and friends, they'd give me a hard time and yeah. say, oh, he's trying to be a social media star or, you know, whatever it'd be. Even though my content, most of the time I'd say is like uplifting and trying to be positive in things. 
And then once everything kind of blew up, I would say I did get some, like my program director, they were all very supportive and they all knew my content, but they were just like, you know, be very careful, make sure you're abiding by the social media guidelines and things like that. And then I would say my things really changed or shifted whenever I had the opportunity to be the keynote speaker for the WHO on the use of social media medicine. And I think like once it became almost like validated or like it showed in medicine that it did have importance, then people respected it a lot more. But before yeah. that, it was just kind of like, oh, you know, you're just doing social media stuff. Doctors don't need to be on social media. And my whole talk was why doctors need to be on social media. And that's what the WHO wanted me to, you know, yeah. they were excited that I was going to be talking about that. And then so I think that kind of frame shifted everything. That's that's such a, an achievement. That's congratulations on it. When did you give that? Keynote? That was in 20, it was right in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. In 2020. Where was it located? Where did you go was, for that? Well, it was Over online. Time. It was in the pandemic. Oh, oh that's right. It was, it, had, it, was, it was virtual, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's say, did you get to go somewhere cool? But no, you could, you could see you got, that I'm the brains. You got to, this. you got to go to your office, and, right? Uh, yeah, and you know, <laughs> where was it located? <laughs> well, I was thinking, uh, you know, in the past year, things have, you know, they're yeah. actually having some events. But you're right; that was a silly thing to ask. <laughs> Um, it's okay. You like, were unconscious for part of that year. I'll, that's you, right. It can be forgiven. It's all a haze. But, <laughs> but like what you were saying, like you do have to be very, very, very careful all throughout medicine. Yeah. Uh, so do you do, are you doing, do you do, are you doing private practice or yeah. Or do you work for, okay. No, I'm private practice um, in a physician owned group and it's, uh, I, I work four days a week. So, okay. and you could pretty much do whatever you want then, right? Like in terms of your social media stuff. I, yeah, for the most part, um, you know, I have very understanding uh, partners and um, and so they, you know, I, I've gotten better at it. And I would say I, I take fewer risks now than I probably used to. Um, mm -hmm. And I've just, and that's part of the learning experience on social media, especially as a physician, because <laughs> we do have this level of professionalism we have to maintain, Right that uh, there's mm -hmm. certain lines we can't cross. And I'm mainly talking on for me because I, I tell a lot of jokes and that's, it's very easy to cross a line when you tell jokes. Right. Oh yeah. Um, We've probably so, all done that. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, it's, it, it happens and, uh, but, but you learn from that and it, it's different on social media versus, you know, when you're just in a group with your friends, you know, mm -hmm. because you don't want to do anything that would undermine the patient physician relationship yeah. or what the public, how the public sees us. Uh, right. and so, yeah, you, you just gotta be careful and it's, it's a, it's a learning process, you know? Yeah. And, I think what you said there is so important because like your friends know you, right. And so they yeah. know your core values in your heart. Whereas the millions of people that see us, all they see is face value and that's it. And yeah. so our values have to be shown at face value. And so if we're doing jokes that maybe they, like people don't see that we don't truly, you know, believe that stereotype or whatever that is, then right. it could be very offensive. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, they, they see me dressed up like wearing a bicycle helmet and a bicycle jersey. They, they know I'm joking for the most part. So, um, I, do I don't that. know. You look pretty professional in that. I, mean, <laughs> I could see you at the hospital in that. Um, what, uh, so it's not only the World Health Organization, by the way, like you've done some really impressive things. So you um, were uh, you served yeah. as an ambassador for the National Infectious Disease Society of America. How did mm -hmm. you get into that position? It was also through social media and throughout COVID, stopping the spread of, you know, misinformation yeah. online. And so it pretty much they just saw all of my content about COVID, even though my account would get taken down like every other day because people would... Uh, flag oh, it really? because I was talking about COVID. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. It was insane. That was on TikTok? Like, on TikTok? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you, and a doctor, were discussing COVID. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Debunking myths, like saying that you should not, I don't know, like garlic's not going to cure COVID for right. you. Right. And, oh, let's take down his account. How dare he, he say that? You know? Uh, I didn't, wow. Man, I didn't know you got, so you were getting oh, like these short-term bans, like for yeah, and then, like, thank a week we had at a time or what? TikTok. It would depend. So I had a, t a contact at TikTok that would help me restore my account. But if they were busy or if they were out of the office, it could be a week or two weeks or whatever oh, it may be. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Yeah. So during that time, that's kind of when we were leading those initiatives. Yeah. 
Well, that's, yeah. that's good. I, I'm glad you stuck with it uh, despite, you know, the, the yeah. threats of being banned <laughs> and things. So, you know, it's, it's insane right now. So there's, I think 4.9 billion people on social media right now, which is just, it, it, you can't even fathom that many people in the fact that the misinformation spreads, you know, about yeah. 10 times faster than accurate or evidence-based information. I always say that I don't think it's any longer like a privilege that doctors get to be on social media, but it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. Like we have to be on there creating good content, evidence-based content, because otherwise the misinformation is just going to keep running rampant. Yeah, you can stick your head in the sand all you want, but I don't know, maybe it's kind of like when newspapers were a thing, right? Like there's no stopping this train now. So really the best thing to do is to be on it. And part of it, you know, when I first got on social media, I was anonymous because I was a resident and I was telling jokes and (laughs) I didn't feel, I didn't feel comfortable. Like I felt secure enough in my position to not get in trouble Mm -hmm. just being a physician on social media. Uh, And I, I'm, I hope that that's starting to change just to your point, because we, we need people doing all kinds of things on social media, as long as you you maintain that, that line of professionalism we talked about, but Mm -hmm. We, we we need residents. We need, you know, student. I think everybody needs to get on social media because that's where the public is. Right. right. Yeah, I agree completely. And so would you say that when medical students or residents ask you about social media, because I get asked this all the time, should I have a social media account? Should it be private? Should it be public? What's your kind of stance on that? Oh, I I'm always encourage everyone to put their real selves out there. Uh, I think that some of the concerns I had looking back on it, I, they were a little bit overblown. Like I, 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 I should have felt more secure in, in my position and the support I had around me to be able to be myself on social media, yeah, but... because I think that's what people want to see in part. They want to see accurate information, but they also yeah. want to see your real, that doctors are real people. Yes. There still, though, is that level of professionalism that you were talking about. I mean, there's different versions of ourselves, right? There's the version that we might share with our family and close friends. There's a version we might share at work. There's a version we might share, you know, I don't know, when we're just cutting loose and having fun, right? So you have to be careful about which version of yourself, I think, because, you know, there's there are appropriate and inappropriate things for healthcare professionals and trainees to be putting out into the world, right? But yeah. but yeah, just everyone has a little bit of a different flavor, different personality, different issues that are important to them. So, you know, dig into those and share those with the world for sure. Like I think waking up at 3.45 in the morning is borderline inappropriate. <laughs> Like I, <laughs> if you look at the comment section, I think most people agree with you. What time do you go to bed? How do you make this I try this to go work? to bed. So if I'm waking up at 3.30 to 3.45, I'll try to get, be in bed by like 8.30 or 8.45. But I genuinely say like I wake up at four, go to bed at nine, try to get seven hours of sleep a night is yeah. genuinely what I try to do. You must be really good at falling asleep quickly. Oh, within two minutes. Yeah, that's the key. Out. See, I need Done. like an hour of wind down time that's and then right. I'll lay there so for about 30 wife. minutes. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't do that, but I admire it. I just really couldn't do it. Yeah, I do too. I wish I could do I, I could do that consistently. You get so but much more done. I think well, I can. so quiet I think at it's that possible. Time. I think uh, following people like Tommy on social media yeah. and seeing how he does it, I think it actually does help. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I think what you well, do clearly you've already people. influenced him. You've he influenced already signed me. up for that oh, trainer. I love that. I'm all about it, man. I'm I'm like, let's do it. I just need you to remind me daily. Send Dave. me daily messages and, and shame. I think at four helps. o'clock in the morning, yeah. saying, "Hey, I'm at the gym. What are you doing?" I'm, right. I'm like, God, man. <laughs> so it's so funny you say that. So it's probably the most common question I get asked is like my daily schedule or like what I do in a day. And so like I do day in the life videos. The amount of hate comments in these videos oh is hilarious. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. Um, which it doesn't bother me. My wife, she's like, how dare they they comment that? I'm like, Phoebe, <laughs> we don't even know that person. I'm like, what does it matter what they comment? Yeah. And they're yeah. just jealous. It's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, th- I mean, talk about, you know, how to how to just do social media, dealing with comments like that and, and right. knowing what to take seriously and what not to take seriously is a big part of that, you know? Yeah. Yo, for sure. It's And it... If you let every comment get to you, you will not make it on social yeah. media. There's right. just no way. Because even if you make the best content in the world, 
they're going to be the people that don't have a profile image that you're not allowed to comment back to that are mm-hmm, going mm-hmm. to say horrible things to everyone on the planet. Right, exactly. You know, uh, what, but something else that you had said is like waking up at four in the morning and then no one, like four to 6 a.m. I think that is the golden hours for whatever you want to do. Like I like fitness. Other people like to draw. Other people like to paint. Right. Four to 6 a.m. No one else is going to be awake. Only the crazy people like me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to bother you. So like wake up at this time and get some stuff done. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. Honestly, I find myself, I, hmm. I, I sometimes will get my best like skit ideas like mm-hmm. early in the morning because like I'm rested. You know, it's typically after I have coffee, but s- yeah. still like. Not me. If I'm awake at 4 a.m., there's a good chance I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> some people, like, some people truly. seriously is wrong. <laughs> some people yeah. truly are not I'm morning not, people. I could stay yeah. up until 4 a.m. That'd be fine. Yeah. yeah but, but if I get up that early, oh, I don't know. Something's wrong with me. <laughs> I do. I do like how I feel like I have more create, creative juices flowing. Yeah. Like that early in the morning, but yeah. I don't know. Mine are more late at night, like that yeah. one a.m. to four a.m. See, that's also weird. Yeah, it is. That's I mean, I don't get to strange. do that because I have children and a job and thing, you know. But that, if I were just left to my own devices, yeah. I think that's where I would end up. Mm, probably right. Yeah. When the, I mean, that's why we're all different, right? And yeah. uh, morning people, late different night ways people. Ways to do it. We need yeah. we yeah. need some influencers who are showing us what it's like to be productive at one to four a.m. There we go. Yeah. There we go. You guys got to balance me. out Dr. Not Martin Not for the next here. 10 years at least. Yeah. <laughs> That's your, your whole niche. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, hey, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hey, Chris, you know what this is? Stethoscope. Uh, yeah. It's not just any stethoscope. It's the Echo Core 500 digital stethoscope with three lead ECG. That's pretty they, fancy. I didn't even know they could do that. They've yeah. combined the ECG, the little yeah. tracing thing. The danger squiggles. Yeah, the danger into a stethoscope. And, That's and, pretty handy. And it's it's also got 40 times noise amplification, noise cancellation, and also a fancy little uh, uh, display right oh, here. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's so cool. And so, uh, honestly, if I had something like this in med school, like I would not have uh, been yelled at by as many cardiologists mm, as That I would was. have been nice. Yeah, it would have mm-hmm. been really nice. Uh, we have a special offer for our U.S. listeners. Visit echohealth.com slash KKH and use code NOC50 to experience Echo's Core 500 digital stethoscope technology. That's E-K-O health slash KKH and use NOC50 to get a 75-day risk-free trial and free case and free shipping with this exclusive offer. Kristen, do you remember when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life after training? I do. Eventually, I decided on private practice and it was the best decision i have ever made hey okay glock and flecken was probably the Uh first very funny but it's really hard to start your own private practice it is especially in today's world and that's why independent practice partners is there they want to help you start your own practice and they will ensure that your practice doesn't just survive but thrives to find out more go to ipracticepartners.com again that's the letter i practicepartners.com all right we're back with dr tommy martin um uh, of of internet fame we're gonna play a game that because i think med peds as a Mm -hmm. field is a bit unknown uh compared to other things like it's just not as common right streamlined yeah um and so so here's a a game i feel like could shed a little light on med peds so i call it med or peds or both oh this will be fun so i'm gonna name a thing and you're gonna tell me in your line of work does that apply to med like adult medicine or peds kids or maybe both or both or none or none i don't know okay all right three hour plus rounds (laughs) medicine internal medicine Medicine. That's med. That's not peds, right? If you're working with meds, definitely not peds. I will <laughs> say some divisions of pediatrics will be known for that. Yeah. Gotcha. So if I had to, like the neonatal ICU, um, pick you, maybe, maybe not. Uh, some rotations in peds, but for the most part, internal medicine. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So I thought you'd say. All right. Next one. Forty-five minute hyponatremia rant. <laughs> 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 what, if, 
What do you think? <laughs> just so funny because like every <laughs> meme in the world about hyponatremia <laughs> with the internal medicine doctor. <laughs> Does that ever get any play on a pediatric service? If you're a black resident, you'll get to learn about hyponatremia, but uh, I, don't, I would say with no other attendings, but I don't go on for 45 minutes on it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's more of an internal medicine thing. 1,000%. Uh, okay. All right. Here's one. Uh, the, I guess giving, I will say giving a, a rounds presentation in front of the patient. Um, I would say both. Yeah. 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 But both of them. Yeah. And it really, so with, I let the upper level resident decide what we do, but I'd say in, in general, um, especially in academia, it'd be both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's sort of my, my, what I remember most about my pediatric rotations versus internal medicine was on peds. We seem to just do a lot of interacting in the room mm -hmm. with, with the family there, with the patient, with the kid, and and I just, I just have that memory. Maybe it probably depends on who you work with, though. But it's probably a good idea for, for both sides to be doing a lot more in the room, right? Yeah, to me, it lets for – there's a couple of reasons why I like to do it. But, again, I let my upper-level resident kind of decide what they want to do. Yeah. But if I'm making the decision, I usually round in the room with the patients. And to me, it lets the patient see how much we're actually thinking about them caring about them, how much is going into the thought process of their care of plan. And so they could trust us so much more when they see all, like everything that we're doing, instead of just walking in, oh, this is what we're going to do. And you're there for 10 minutes. They right. see the whole 30 minute, you know, all of it. Do they under, here's, as the patients would be my question is like, does somebody explain to them what you guys talk in your own language? So is someone explaining to the patient as they go, mm -hmm. what that all means? Because I could also see how that might be scary for the patient. Yeah, so if we do bedside rounds, like with the patient in the room, the yeah. resident physicians are not supposed to, they're supposed to use terminology which the patient could understand. And if they don't, that's where the attending doctor then should clarify what's being said. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, next one. Um, which has the best snacks? The Ooh. best unit snacks? Peds, for sure. 100%. Yeah. I guess, At yeah. the pediatric yeah. hospital, we have... Uh, golden grams we have cheerios we have <laughs> we have frosted flakes and that's just oh. for breakfast oh man we have all kinds of snacks there <laughs> oh. kids need their snacks uh yeah they're oh, yeah. growing and yeah I, I remember that peds had chocolate milk oh we oh. definitely have chocolate milk <laughs> you got you got some lollipops maybe it's a, it's a, what are you gonna get milk is like on draft <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> i love it and the, the adult medicine, what are you going to get? Saltines? I mean, yeah. come on. You already like know. Peanut butter, saltines. That's probably it. Yep. I don't know. That's it. Yeah. If All you're right. lucky, if you're really lucky, you get golden grams. But yeah, that's yeah. few and far between. Yeah. There you go. What about coffee? Do they have coffee and peas? Or is that just medicine? Well, coffee. That's not... a great question. You know, uh, we but did. We, we have it for the parents, so we get it. But okay, medicine, you, you get like, it's, I don't even know where this coffee comes from. <laughs> if it looks like tar. Really? Yeah, <laughs> not good, not good stuff. Okay, all right. Uh, the busiest overnight shifts, the busiest nights. Oh, internal medicine. Oh, it depends. Okay, so internal medicine with acuity, I'd say both for different reasons. Internal medicine for acuity, meaning people are sick, you're doing a lot, you might be running a lot of rapids, going to a lot of codes, things like that. Peds, a lot of calls about important things, but might be mild things. Right. So more volume, but maybe not mm -hmm. the acuity that we would see on the adult side yeah. of things. Okay. Um, all right. Holding a patient in your lap and spinning around in a chair. Oh, adult medicine, 1,000%. <laughs> <laughs> the only drug is your service. <laughs> Oh man, no, that's definitely oh, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually I use that example because that's something that we will sometimes do in ophthalmology. Um, oh, if we're wanting to estimate uh, a, a, a vertigo, <laughs> no, estimate a, a visual acuity, because in a in a nonverbal child, um, you can hold them in front of you, look at their eyes, and spin around in a chair very slowly. If they have nystagmus, 
then you know they have about a 2400 level acuity. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be Oliver's eye doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little bit that's, of a commute for appointment. Yeah, a tiny bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Tiny yeah. bit far away. That's okay. Just a few, a couple thousand Wait, but miles. But you're putting this patient in your lap? Yeah, you're like, well, you're holding a, a kid. Like, yeah. yeah. And Alessims are very young and it's, you know, it's fun. It's like a little, <laughs> you know. Your kid. It's, a, yeah. it's like it's, Santa. Like, sit on this strange ride. man's lap and <laughs> <laughs> take a ride. They're usually they're not like it's not like an eight year old, all right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, anyway, that's a little tip for like uh, you know from the eye world, I guess. Well, you know, I um, love that Oliver actually he is nonverbal as of right now, and he has vision issues. So oh. his ophthalmologist better do that. If not, yeah. I'm sending him your way. <laughs> yeah. Angry cardiologists. <laughs> Both. Am I gonna get you in trouble here? <laughs> Plead the fifth. I just feel it, it's not their fault. Okay, they're you're being very nice. So I, I'm putting you over, on the spot here. They're so overworked and they're consulted about yeah. anything and everything. And so I probably wouldn't be the happiest either. But it's definitely both. All like right. if you call one, it's not. Is it like? I try to be like, hi, good morning. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. I just have a quick consult for you. And then it's, it's not. <laughs> as soon as you say the word consult, that's it's over. Yeah, it's done. Okay. A um, couple more. Burnout. Right. Burnout. Uh, internal medicine. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Because I think with PEDS, you have a lot of joy and a lot of play and a lot of fun. And so that's nice. I will say the a lot of pediatric schedules are really tough. But I think internal medicine probably. Yeah. And then the last one I have, um, number of RVUs you generate. Oh, internal medicine for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, all the procedures and yeah, yeah, just in, internal medicine would have a lot more, just the acuity, the high level of billing that you could do based off the medical problems. And then you do a lot more procedures in internal medicine. And of course it would depend on what division of each of these, but yeah. I guess I I had one more. I think I know the answer to this one. Um, safety suckers. <laughs> Is that like suckers, stickers? Wait, what, I, what are they? I, I, I assume that's more peds than internal medicine. Like I don't you know, know. Like you know the safety suckers? You know what I'm talking a about? Safety, safety sucker. Yeah, it's it's got like instead of like a, a, a pointy stick, it's like a loop. It's like a loop. Like a ring pop? Like no, no, it's like a it's like a little Oh I don't God. know what these I, are. I think they're called safety sucker. They're like a, it's a I, sucker that you I was would thinking of the um, water swabs that we give people when they're MPO <laughs> because they oh, can't have anything to eat. Safety sucker. <laughs> that's like a candy. <laughs> All right, that would probably also work too. All right, that was oh, med man. or peds or both. Love it. That was that was a fun one. That was a good one. Um, all right, let's uh, take one more break and then we'll come back with Dr. Tommy Martin. All right, we are back with Tommy Martin. And uh, Tommy, what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to read a story that was sent in by one of our listeners. Uh, and I haven't read the story. And so let's, let's, let's get to it here. This comes from Abby. Abby says... When I was a pediatric intern working nights on the general inpatient floor, I took care of a medically complex, complex patient with many active problems that we were managing. I didn't know him well as I had only taken care of him during the night, but knew from sign out that he had a complex corneal problem and was followed by ophthalmology. Ooh. So now you're interested. That's a, that yeah. doesn't happen very often. Yeah. We, and generally we try not to be in a hospital. So, right. um, Near the end of my shift, I got a message from his nurse with a picture of a contact lens saying that she had found it on his face by his eye. Oh. She had no idea where it came from. I quickly scoured the optho notes, trying to figure out why there might have been a contact lens in his eye. I was worried maybe a lost contact had caused all his problems in the first place. I could find no mention of a contact lens in the notes, so I sent the picture to the on-call ophthalmology resident, asking if they knew anything about it. I forgot to include the patient's name in the message, but she replied right away, is this the patient in question? It's a contact lens. She was confirming it's contact lens. I obviously knew it was a contact lens, but I had no idea why he would have had one in. So I asked her, was it supposed to be in his eye? She replied, yeah, we put it there, but it's fine. We'll take care of it when he goes to the OR in the morning. 
I was pretty shocked by this as my team knew nothing about their plans to take him to surgery and we had given been giving him tube feeds all night. Oh no. Oopsie. <laughs> Little miscommunication there. Uh, I still have no idea why they put a contact in his eye in the first place. Oh, that's why I'm here. I can explain oh. why a contact lens is in the eye. Sometimes we will put a contact on the eye um, for a a uh, to help with pain relief mm. for a a corneal. Well, she does abrasion. say he had a corneal problem. Yeah, exactly. But also, but I'm not sure how that relates to surgery. So I'm not sure, but it is not unusual for us to be using contact lens therapeutically like that. So that's probably covered up happened. like a little band aid. Yeah, exactly. Eyeball. Because uh, you know, corneal abrasions, the cornea is like the most sensitive part of the body. And so if you have a scratch on the eye, it's exquisitely painful for like the average, but especially young people um, and who have all their corneal nerves and are just like ready to explode if there's something wrong. Uh, and so a basically a contact, a bandage contact lens is just like a, it's a bandaid. And so you're just putting it on to protect against the pain from the eyelid rubbing up against the cornea. Well, there you go. Now she knows if she's listening. So there you go, Abby. I hope you, you heard that. So now you know why we use contact lenses in patients. But also, I always tell people, uh, especially when I talk to like critical care doctors or anybody who's, who, who treats sedated uh, patients, uh, always check for contact lenses. <laughs> yeah, you know, you said that so much that then when you were unconscious and critically ill, yeah. I disp- I did not want to do this, but I felt like you'd be mad if I didn't. So I had to ask, are you putting eye drops in his eyes to lubricate them while he's in ICU? <laughs> she told my medical team to put artificial tears in my eyes. <laughs> Which I you'll be happy that. to know. They were on top of it. They were already doing so it. So nice. But I knew I you would want me so to much. check, so I reluctantly uh, did so. You really do love me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you did also get, do chest compressions, but that <laughs> also shows that you, you really do love me. Which um, I have to say, yeah. that is like one of the craziest stories ever. Oh, is it yeah. nuts? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That just, yep. like, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I just can't even imagine that happening. And then the fact that you two are just here thriving. Well, also, you are the, you're, the, you're the strongest, physically the strongest person of the three of us here. And so like, you could probably attest to how difficult even two minutes of chest compressions is. And she did oh, 10 yeah. minutes. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's crazy that for 10 minutes and the fact that you're still alive. Like, right. I mean, that's just, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah. There, she did it. There's she big plans it. for you guys. <laughs> and, and Kristen, <laughs> it shows how fit she is. She said oh, that she's gosh, been the one working out. That. Oh, she, yeah. She is. <laughs> she, whenever, I mean, you turn into a superhuman in situations yeah, like that. Yeah, thank goodness for adrenaline. So. You know, that's what I have <laughs> yeah. to say about that. What, what year was that? 2020. May 2020. of 2020. Mm-hmm. Wow. The absolute worst time to have a major medical mm-hmm. event. <laughs> yeah, wait, did you even get to go see him when he was in the hospital? Like you no. just saved his life and you don't even get to go see him? No, they didn't oh, even, my. I mean, I get there, you know, time was of the essence, but I didn't even right. get the option to, to ride with him in the ambulance or any of that. No, I was all yeah separated, was... which was really tough, but yeah. 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 So, but it's insane. We did it. Yeah. Or, I, we, we did, did it. it. You did it. Well, you did the, <laughs> you did the other part, I did you a know, little bit. the waking up and stuff. That was good. Good job. Yeah. Well, uh, Tommy, so let's tell people where to find you. First of all, I just want to say you all, you have a race coming up, right? Uh, yeah. And, and tell people what you're going to be doing during this race. Yeah. So I set a goal for this year to do a 1200 pound powerlifting total. So hopefully I'll do a 300 bench a 400 pound squat and a 500 pound deadlift. And I'll do that the morning before doing a full distance Ironman, which is a (laughs) 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then a 26.2 mile run and hopefully break a 10 hour Ironman at that race. Now, I don't even know if I'll even get close to it, but those are the goals I've set. And I'm inching my way towards that. It's in November. Yeah. It's in November, so everybody should go follow uh, Dr. Tommy Martin. It's at Dr. Tommy Martin. You can find him on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and I'm sure you're going to be documenting your journey and all of this, right? And, and yeah, the training, definitely. and yeah, uh, that's got to be fascinating. I'm definitely going to be looking out for it uh, because I just that sounds like an impossible thing to do. And so, uh, but if anybody can do it. I'm sure you can. So well, I just, just want to say, if you uh, if you struggle with masochism, 
Therapy is also an option. <laughs> just just give it a give it a thought. Yeah, there's you're like, the, you're like the <laughs> fifth person within two weeks that's told me that. That's, that's insane. <laughs> Uh, but I was going to say, you know, you did hire me as your coach throughout this episode. And so That's you, right. if you want to do the race with me, I mean, uh, I'm sure there's openings. I don't, I don't care to do some more CPR. Let's my, just, let's take it easy. My arms and legs would <laughs> fall off my body. Um, but uh, I'll leave it, I'll leave it to you, my friend. So yeah, there we go. Uh, thank you again for coming on. It's really a pleasure to finally get a chance to chat with you. And uh, yeah, good luck to you. Hey, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. How far do you think I would get into an Iron Man before I um, cease to exist? What's first? Uh, the swim. The swim? Like two and a half mm. miles. Hmm. I don't think you can swim two and a half miles. <laughs> I could swim maybe two lengths of an Olympic sized pool. What is that? 100 meters. Yeah. And then I would sink like a stone. Yeah. You're... I would be done. I not. I cannot. I'm too like. I don't know. I would think that being so lanky might help you with swimming, though, know, right? Gotta, like big, str- isn't Michael Phelps like all arms and legs as well? Yeah, but he's also has like significant muscles. Yeah, the big shoulders and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, Sorry. I'm like I don't think you'd get very far. Person. I would get even less far though. So, <laughs> kudos so, to, to yeah, Dr. Martin. That is hard. I, I. That's uh, everybody go support him. Like that's what he's trying to do is super cool. And um, yeah, it'd be interesting to watch that his whole story and how he how he does. And yeah. so even if he doesn't make it in his time that he wants to make it in, just the fact that he's like he's trying, doing he's getting that. out there, Ooh, doing something big. Yeah. Do you, uh, what do you what do you guys we want to hear from you now? Like what are what hard things are you trying to do in your life? Um, uh, and you know, let us know. What hard things are we doing? What, uh, I feel like we're not doing anything hard enough I'm, now. <laughs> I'm gonna go walk the dog later today. I don't know. We cl- we cleared up his diarrhea from a while mm, back. That, that was a hard thing. Was hard. Ugh. Definitely on the same level as an Iron Man. All right. <laughs> there are lots of ways to hit us up if you have thoughts about this episode, or um, if you have any other physical things that you think I would also die trying to do. Mm. Uh, email us knock knock high at human contentcom We're on all the social media platforms. Hang out with our human content podcast family on Instagram and TikTok at human content pods. Thanks to all the wonderful listeners leaving wonderful feedback and reviews. We love those. Send us those good, good, positive, happy reviews. Those are great. If you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube, we can give you a shout out like Elena5113 on YouTube about um, our episode with Violin MD. Mm. Uh, she said, the crossover we were all waiting for. Mm, yes, she was very in demand. I think people are probably going to be talking about this episode I think uh, with so. Tommy Martin, especially yeah. on TikTok. He's got a lot of fans. Got a lot he's of doing fans. some pretty interesting stuff. That's right. Uh, also, full up video episodes of this podcast are up on my YouTube channel every week at D Glock and Flecken. We also have a Patreon. Lots of cool perks, bonus episodes where we react to medical shows and movies. We got a little little town, little city little growing community knock knock high that's what we call it knock knock high population i don't know i don't either 500 i don't know something you like don't that. know we're we're there we're uh, uh, uh we're city council members uh early ad free episode access interactive q a live stream events patreon.com slash glock and flecken or go to glock and speaking of patreon community perks shout out to all the jonathans Patrick, Lucia C, Sharon S, Omar, Edward K, Stephen G, Ross Box, Jonathan F, Marion W, Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C, Brianna L, Dr. J, Chaver W, Jonathan A, Leah D, K L, Rachel L, and Ann P. A virtual head nod to you all. Patreon roulette. Random shout out to somebody on the emergency medicine tier. Let me get in my Gronk voice. Gronk. 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 Who's Gronk? Rob Gronkowski, <laughs> retired tight end for the New England <laughs> Patriots. Patreon roulette. <laughs> Random shout out to Claudia H for being a patron. Claudia. Cla- Claudia? Claudia? Well, I don't know. We don't know. Claudia. It depends. I mean, if she's. Either way, both of you. Yeah. Are. Both of you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia H. 
Uh, we are your hosts. Thanks for listening. We're Will and Kristen Flannery, also known as the Glock and Fleckens. Our special thanks to our guest today, Dr. Tommy Martin. Executive producers are Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corny, Rob Goblin. Rob. <laughs> you cannot say his name. Rob really. Goblin. Rob Goblin. I'm going to say something different <laughs> every time now. Rob Goblin and Shanti Brook. Our editor and engineer is Jason Portiza. Our music is by Omer Bins V. To learn about our Knock Knock Highs program, disclaimer, and ethics policy, submission, verification, licensing terms, and have release terms. Go to glockandflagon.com. Reach out to us at knockknockhigh at human-content.com with questions, concerns, thoughts, loving remarks, or fun medical puns. Knock Knock High is a human content production. Knock Knock. Goodbye. Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcast or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.